Alright folks, so in this video we're going to show how you can load or upload a generic code plug to your BTEC DMR6X2 radio. Now you could get this code plug off of a website, off of a users group, or you could even get it from one of your buddies. In this particular case we're going to get it from the McClure.com website. I hope I said that correctly. If you don't know that website, you really should familiarize yourself with it. He has a wealth of knowledge around uh, these uh, digital handheld radios as well as other analog radios produced in China. It's a great resource. Now while this programming cable looks like other or radio programming cables, it's a little bit different. There's no circuitry or chips inside of this. It's just a pass-through cable. So you have to use this particular cable. Another cable will not work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up the side of my radio. Let me turn this thing off. I want to open up the side of my radio and expose the microphone and earphone ports. Then I want to take my cable and I want to make sure that it is firmly seated. Make sure that it's all the way in. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to hook this USB plug up to the USB interface on my laptop. It's that simple. When you connect your radio to your computer, you always want to check your COM port and then you want to initialize your radio. It just makes good sense. So here we are at the McLure website. I can't stress how important and how much information is on this site. You really should check it out. Anyhow, if you take a look, he has links to reviews, uh, firmware updates, code plugs for many different radios. We're going to go ahead and select the DMR6X2, and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to see a series of links. We are going to pick the link for sample code plugs. Okay, on this page you can see he has uh, downloads for various code plugs, not just for the DMR6X2. So if you have a different radio, you still want to come to this website and check it out and see if there's something you can learn from the code plugs. We're going to go ahead and pick the DMR6X2. After downloading the code plug, we're going to open the CPS software that we previously got off of BTEC's website. And then we're going to open up the file that we just downloaded. And once we do that, we'll be able to see the contents of the code plug. And then we're going to step through these contents. Depending upon the size of the code plug and how much information it has, it could take a little while to open it up. I don't believe the BTEC application, the CPS software, is uh, multi-threaded. Click OK. Now we can see the contents of the code plug itself. The first thing we're going to see is some channels, and we can see a variety of digital channels. And what's handy is that we can click on each one of them and see how they're configured and set up. Maybe there's different parameters or different settings for each one. So you'll be able to use this to kind of gauge how you want to set up your code plug, because ultimately that's what you want to do is program your own code plug. And you can see that these channels are grouped in different clusters, starting at different numbers. And that makes it easy to pr uh, program frequency settings where you can have uh, different channels for the same frequency but multiple um, talk groups. And you can also program simplex and analog channels in here as well. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail. But you can click on any of these and then you'll be able to get an idea of how to program maybe a digital channel, maybe an analog channel, maybe a simplex analog channel. Um, it's pretty handy. As we walk through the code plug, we'll be able to see other pieces of information. Here, we see how zones can be configured and set up, for example. We can also take a look at scan lists, which are another important thing. And then we can also take a look at uh, frequency offsets. We can take a look at some optional settings, which is really going to pull up a bunch of dialog panels. You can click through these and get a kind of an idea of how they're configured. Maybe compare it to the default uh, code plug that comes on your radio. It just gives you an idea of different configurations or settings you may want to use and things you can try out on your radio or in your code plug. We're going to go down and take a look at the digital section. The first thing is a radio ID list. This is where you plug in your radio ID and the name of your radio if you choose to name it. And then here are some talk groups. This code plug has a lot of talk groups. You can use the import export tool to export this to a CVS file and then import it into your code plug or you can just modify this code plug to meet your needs. 
here's where you would program receive um, RX group lists. And then we're also going to check and make sure he's got his digital contacts downloaded and it looks like he does. The next thing we want to do, the last thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and write this to our radio so we can look at our radio interface and see how it works. If you've already downloaded your digital contacts, there's no need to upload them to your radio again. That makes this process a little faster. Click OK and we're done. So go ahead and check out the radio, go ahead and check out the code plug. Um, in the next series of videos, we're going to actually program our own code plug and we want to use this one as kind of a template or a base to get some ideas for best practices and how we do things. And it's really just another step in the learning process. Anyhow, if you like this video and you want to see more content of a similar nature, go ahead and click like, maybe leave a comment and subscribe. Thanks everybody.